Hello, hello, my lovely angels. This is your girl Sim back with another episode of The Sim Squad. Hi! So, continuing with my 12 days off, today I've decided to do five oud fragrances. So, this was like for sure it was going to come, right? If I'm doing five florals, five fruity, five everything, there has to be a five oud. Now, one of these will be a little like, mm, why? Because oud is not clearly listed as an ingredient, but woody notes have been listed. And I think that woody note is like definitely composed of oud and some other notes, right? Because I can clearly smell the oud. So that will be a little bit like off brand, but like um, I still want to go ahead and like show that one. Now, of course, oud fragrances, it's a staple here in the UAE. Everybody wears it. Everybody has the pure oud as well, which you can actually use for layering. You also get pure oud as sprays, which you can actually uh, layer other perfumes with. So you can actually create multiple layering combinations with that oud. Yeah. And normally you have the spray one, which is like the easiest to use. In my case, I normally prefer not to use oud unless it is the pure one, the oil. I try not to use it unless it's a special occasion, like someone's wedding or Eid or something like, like a big deal, right? That's when you take out the big guns. <laughs> Let me start with like the first one and not like keep yapping and telling my whole life story, you know? So the first one, of course, I have to start with, I have to start strong. So I'm gonna start with Badiyal Oud on our, sorry, Oud for Glory. This perfume, the moment I smelled it, I was like, why do people have like conflicting opinions? Because I got this quite late. I, I was late to the party of this entire range. People had already reviewed this, used it. And I actually used to see it so much online. I never knew it was duping something, blah, blah, blah. All that information was not available to me. I literally, after I started like doing the reviews, people started asking me to get this perfume. And they were like, listen, you're not going to regret it. If you like Oud, get it. And I was like, okay, fine, let me just like get like the range and I cannot go back. <laughs> now, this is considered to be an amber wood and the rating on Fragrantica is 4.24. It smells supposedly like Initio Oud for Greatness. I don't think you can use the word supposedly after you see the packaging. <laughs> oh gosh, but you know what? Because of this perfume, Latafa kind of came on the map. Whether it was for a duping house or whatever, this kind of was like also like a shameless effort, right? Like because like it's literally like the design and everything, the bottle, the whole thing is like very, uh, you know. <laughs> and then after that, like a lot of other brands also copied it. So like there's so many other brands that have the same kind of packaging and everything. Uh, a lot of houses, what they do is like they have... Latafa, for example, they have Mason Alhambra and Verve and there's many other ones, which like then the, these kind of shady things go on over there, you know. Same with, I think there's uh, Armaf under the same uh, umbrella, like it's called Stella, Sterling Perfumes or something. They also have their own. So it's, a, it's like a whole thing. I don't know what the logic is behind that, but we are okay, right? Since we're getting good perfumes. Now this is polarizing. You know why? Because Oud as a note is polarizing. Like you will either love Oud or you're going to hate it. Oud, but I also think it's kind of like an acquired taste. I always give people this example that the first time I tried sushi, I took it out of my mouth because I was like, uh-uh, this isn't happening. Now I get cravings for sushi. So you know what? Oud, I feel is something you need to, especially if you're not from GCC, you need to build your uh, tolerance to it. If you directly go for big guns like this, this is not a beginner oud, you know, it's like a heavy hitter. So yeah, beast mode, beast everything. The oud is like ooding, you know. <laughs> now, the top notes for this are bergamot, peppercorn and blackcurrant. Heart notes of peony, caramel and oud wood. And the base notes of raspberry, patchouli and dry amber. So this is supposed to be a very fruity, sweet oud. And although I can't identify the oud, uh, the fruits at all, I can tell you one thing. This is definitely a sweet oud. So imagine like oud being like super sweet. There's nothing much more that I can say about this perfume. It's just like a very woody oud, which is like super sweet. No, I cannot tell you whether bergamot is the bergamot. <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you if uh, there's bergamot because I can't smell it. Pink peppercorn, blackcurrant, all these notes, it's like, like invisible to me. And peony. Peony is like, I mean, it must be like buried under all these heavy notes, you know. So like, yeah, think of caramel, oud wood and uh, some amber. Stunning perfume. For me, this is like 
a nighttime perfume but a, like a dress up situation and uh, I think you can wear it like all season and only but only at night right this is like a unisex so a man or a woman can wear it it adapts so if a man wears it it kind of starts smelling like a manly uh, perfume if a woman wears it, it just smells very feminine projection is like a crazy full feet like you spray this Spray this in the living room, all the bedrooms will start smelling of this. This is one of those, right? If you're on the ground floor, it'll go to the second floor. <laughs> it's one of those perfumes. And the longevity is like eight plus hours. If any, if you're not getting that kind of longevity on this, it needs to sit and mature for some time. For me, this is like a 10 out of 10 oud. This is like one of those essential ouds I need to have in my collection. So the next one is its sister. It's an amethyst or the wife, which <laughs> should be more... Let's imagine it's like this is an Arabian king, Arabian queen. Yeah, this is like a literal Arabian queen. I am obsessed with this perfume and everybody knows it. There's so many of y'all I know who are also obsessed with this perfume. You know what? I take it back. This is 9 out of 10. Okay. This is 10 out of 10. This is a perfume you'll keep buying. You know, because this makes you feel like royalty. Like if royalty, if the word queen had a scent, it would be this. It is elevated like it feels like something that you would worship you know like put on the pedestal you know like it's it's a very gorgeous set it has basically in short udan rose but it's done in a very light way so the roses used over here okay let me tell you top bottom and um, heart notes top is bergamot pink pepper and pe uh, blackcurrant just like the oud for glory heart notes are turkish rose bulgarian rose and jasmine and the base notes of agarwood amber and vanilla there's something really cooling in this and I have no idea what that cooling thing is. Like I actually, I don't know why in my head, I always thought there was saffron in this because saffron normally gives that like very, very cold feeling, you know, like when you smell it, you feel like it's cold. This perfume is snobby. It is like arrogant. It is somebody who thinks they're better than you, you know, <laughs> because they're prettier, they dress up better, everything. And immediately in this, I can imagine a queen who is dressed up in a robe, which is like of this dark purple color and she's adorned with like gold jewelry dark cohorts like you know like and everybody's like worshiping her you know this is called an amber vanilla and i have no idea why this is a floral woody floral uh, and it's supposed to be a dupe for atomic rose by inicio now the inicio one is a bit i don't think these two are dupes maybe it was trying to dupe and then it just got better like i just feel this is so much better than inicio's Atomic Rose. I recently got to smell it. Anytime I would get, buy this perfume over that one. Now, usually I do not gravitate towards uh, rose fragrances because rose is a, a note that can either smell too old or it'll smell like Bath and Body Works, like a spray, you know? So, like, I always felt like it was like a raw deal, you know, like blind buying, especially, I would not. This one I bought it because, like, everybody was recommending it, and I'm so glad I did. Because this has become like my forever in my life perfume, you know. It'll always stay with me. It'll always be, I hope they never discontinue this, you know. So I actually like think it's a stunning perfume. The rose is a very jammy rose in this. It smells sweet. The oud is also like I feel like they burned the wood and then they extracted oil from it. Like it's a dark oud, you know. It's like a dark oil. And then it has like this little hint of pepper and a little hint of bergamot which just makes it very interesting, you know. You have your vanilla at, at the bottom and it is like very, very uh, heavy vanilla, you know, like it's a very sweet, uh, high performance vanilla. This is like how a love potion would smell like if like there was something called a love potion and if you would smell it, it would smell like this. I think this is an intoxicating fragrance. If you wear this, guy, girl, doesn't matter, everybody will be like, like in awe of you. It's such a gorgeous scent. But please don't wear this like in public bus or public transport or don't overspray this in an elevator or a closed car or something because this can become a migraine inducing scent very easily if you overspray and if you're not getting enough air right for me this is a 10 out of 10 this is for me any season but it should be at night and it's a dress up perfume the projection is like a good like four feet and the longevity is eight plus hours again this is like a beast mode perfume uh, the celebrity I had given this to was Eva Green because I just was like, oh my god, her dark energy. Like, although I always imagine Eva Green in a green dress, because uh, obviously the word green is in her name, and like I don't know, like the whole emerald color, like it like suits her, you know. But I think like this one should go to her. The next one is Amiral Oud by 
Latafa. This is the intense oud. So there's a normal Amiral oud also, which I am planning to get because somebody commented recently, like, can you please review that? And they like it a lot. They were like, I would like it. This is like supposed to be the due for By the Fireplace by Mason Margiela. And I do agree, it does have the same fireplace kind of scent, but this has less fire, fireplace, bonfire, whatever that is, you know. It has lesser of that. It is definitely very smoky, but definitely not like a fireplace kind of smell. But it is a super, super smoky scent. Um, I would call this like an incense scent, right? It's super sweet and the oud in this is there, but it's like there in the background. The notes that come forward to me are like dark fruits. Let me tell you the notes for this. Or wait, let me tell you all the categories. So category is amber. This to me smells like an intoxicating oud. It has this like smoky quality to it, but it's just unripe, you know. More than that, I would be like, oh, you know, like literally like choke on it, you know. The top notes for this are woodsy notes and agarwood. So it's like a super woody note. Middle notes are sugar and vanilla. And the base notes are agarwood again, sandalwood and herbal notes. So those herbal notes are like playing around a little bit and then giving it that like that interesting edge to it and not just keeping it like a very, very sweet vanilla. Now you might ask me what's the difference between oud mood because that's again, not oud mood, sorry. Oud for glory. What's the difference between this one and that? Let's just say the oud for glory smells a bit traditional. It has that little rosiness in it or coldness in it. This one is straight up woods that are sweet. Like that's all I can tell you. Like it's like a very heavy wood which is like burnt slightly and it's giving off this uh, maybe it's just the oud sticks that are burning you know and it's giving off this like you know when they burn the sticks they give out that oil it smells like that but then it has this extreme extreme sweetness which is obviously the uh, vanilla and sugar <laughs> this is a gem of a perfume there's no doubt in my mind like this one again will be in my top favorites I have used it a lot, but you don't really need a lot of this perfume, you know. You, by the way, the bottle is like super heavy. I don't quite like the bottle. I don't think it's like great, but it's not bad. Like, especially because the cap is good and the shape of the bottle is good, you know. Kind of like the Serge Luta, but like not without, without the roundy thingy on the top. For me, this is a strictly fall winter fragrance and it should be only worn at night. There's no way <laughs> like you would wear this. And please do not wear this and go into the jungle and make a bonfire you'll definitely have some grizzly following you or something because it's like super, super, super sweet, you know. It's a really nice scent. Uh, I wouldn't call it a dress-up scent, although like in my case, I would wear it in a dressy situation. Like I would always like need to dress up super well to match this perfume's energy, you know. It's a very good-looking perfume, a handsome or a good-looking perfume. So yeah, I would want to be like dressed up a little bit better, like accessorized, wearing like good jewelry and everything and then wear this perfume. I do wear this to the office sometimes, I won't lie, in winter, but uh, people receive it quite well because like I'm in my cabin when I pass by and stuff, they get whiffs of this and they love it. But I think if they would sit with me in my cabin, they would disagree. You know? <laughs> For me, this is like a 10 out of 10, guys. I can't say anything much about this perfume. Uh, I forgot the celebrity I had allocated for this. You know why? Because I have never made notes for this one. I've always just spoken, you know. So, great perfume and one of the best ouds I have. Next, an oud video would not be complete without one of the Shagaf ouds being in here. <laughs> now, obviously, Shagaf oud, the original, is the most popular one. They're all right there, lined up. But my personal favorite is the oud aswad. I like this one the best. Although people say this smells like a church or a mosque. Yeah, it does because it has incense, you know, anything that has incense in it is automatically going to smell like that. This for me is like a, it's sexy in the weirdest way, okay. <laughs> it just reminds me of a man who would be in a suit and who's badass, but at the same time he has secrets that he doesn't disclose. And the same goes with a woman. If she's like really dressed up well and she likes to wear black for some reason and she holds a lot of secrets, and, but she has this... Uh, attractiveness and allure about her that you cannot resist and you want to get to know her and everybody wants to get to know her but she doesn't want to know anybody else <laughs> it's a snobby cold perfume in short you know it almost smells holy it's like you would be infatuated with someone and if that someone was a perfume it would be this it's an infatuation it's a strong perfume it's slightly powdery it's a lot incensey and it is not for the faint-hearted so basically right now, Shagaf Oats come in like so many different uh, colors, right? And all these names are all colors. So 
this one which is black black is aswad in arabic so this is the shigafood aswad right it is categorized as a smoky woody oud and on fragrantica it's got 4.04 uh, and it's compared to Dolce Gabbana Velvet Tender Oud, which I've never smelled. Top notes for this are rose, saffron, woody notes, and thyme. Middle notes of rose, agarwood, patchouli, cumin, coriander, and jasmine. And the base notes of oud, leather, amber, sandalwood, musk, and vanilla. That's so many notes. Oh my gosh. It took like, I think a few of my hair became like, it got white, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it is a very complicated scent. And when you smell it, like, that's exactly what you feel. It's like, it's not a normal person it's a person who has like a lot of secrets i'm telling you it literally feels like a mystery you know a mystery that you want to unfold and get to know you know we have smelled this perfume or this profile since our childhood this is nothing new to us but it's packaged and bottled so well and now it's like being known by everybody else around the world and i'm so happy that people are getting to experience this scent because for us literally most of the mosques would smell like this you know this was advertised as a unisex and I agree, like it's a unisex perfume, but it is slightly leaning masculine, like slightly, like I, I do wear this perfume a lot, but like, again, only in formal situations where you are going for some formal dinner or something. This is, you can wear this with family as well, but like mostly like I would wear this on Eid where people are inviting me to the houses for dinners and this and that, you know, or like in Ramadan where you have like dinner invites and everything which we do. And like it's like a formal kind of formal because it's an invitation, you know. Or you could wear this at somebody's wedding but then you would smell better than the bride and the groom, you know. So I wouldn't do that. But this is like a seriously addictive perfume. Once you smell it, like you can't keep, you can't stop. You'll keep sniffing on the strip or on your hand or on your clothes, you know. And it's very mysterious. Again, 10 out of 10. Some oods are just like meant to be 10 out of 10. This is one of them. And this one, like... Think of the projection, the longevity, everything being above average is not the right way. That's an understatement, you know. This projects like crazy. This lasts like literally 24 hours. Even after washing my clothes, sometimes I can smell hints of this fragrance, which is very strange. And the celebrity I had given this to was Keanu Reeves from Constantine. So you kind of get the idea, you know. Last but not the least is a new one for me, which I immediately got obsessed with. Now, this one doesn't have the note Oud written in the notes, but I'm pretty sure it has it. This is the Amber Al Haramen's uh, Amber Oud Tobacco Edition. Now, if anybody tells me there's no Oud in this, I'm going to be like really, really angry. If Al Haramen tells me that they, there's no Oud in this, I'm going to get mad at them, you know, and I won't believe them. This one, of course, the star of the show is tobacco because it's like so tobacco, right? Uh, it's classified as an, a spicy amber and uh, on Fragrantica it's got 4.33 and it's supposed to smell like Tom Ford's tobacco vanilla. Now I don't know. I've not smelled tobacco vanilla because Tom Ford perfumes, I'm not normally, I don't gravitate towards them, you know. And plus I heard like, I always thought that was meant for a man, right? But this one is like, yeah, it is masculine, but like a woman can wear it and get away with it. So I would wear this like for sure. The top notes for this are tobacco leaf, cinnamon, black pepper and ginger so yes it's like super spicy right from the top and the tobacco is there right from the top because that's like literally the star of the show the middle notes of vanilla clove star anise cacao tonka bean and incense so spice bomb and then at the base you have again tobacco dried fruits and woodsy notes so literally when i was reviewing this for the first time i literally thought it's like a bag full of all the spices you can think of the whole spices and then you add like a lot of dried fruits in it and when you shake the bag and open it maybe after one day and how it would smell this perfume smells like that you know just with a little bit of added vanilla as well plus the tobacco leaf which is of course so all the other notes are there in the bag <laughs> with tobacco leaf and vanilla that's how it smells like i know about those bag full of spices and dried fruits because we live apart for some time so when my mom used to come from dubai to back home to, and she used to bring gifts and stuff and she used to bring these dried fruits and spices and everything from Dubai for all the relatives as gifts and stuff and her bag used to smell like this it smells like her bag but like there's definitely tobacco a lot of it and I can also smell oud okay I 
will not believe it if somebody tells me this that that this does not have root. It does. Plus, it has that tonka bean and cacao and everything. It's like everything. It literally feels, it smells like my mom's bag when she used to come from Dubai. Full of chocolates, full of like oud stuff and you know, like like all the all kinds of spices, resins and dried fruits and everything. Like it's all a mixed bag of that scent. And I think it's like a nice capture because like it's nostalgic. And like a lot of people will agree with me that like this gives them this hit of nostalgia. The pricing is like $65 for 60 ml. I bought the smallest size. Uh, it's unisex but leans masculine and this is only suitable for fall winter nights it's I'll tell you something this is like a very exclusive perfume you can only wear it sometimes It'll, you'll not get used for this like throughout the year right Middle East wipe check is like on full full the meter is like on right on top it has everything that's Middle Eastern in it the projection is like a good five feet it's a very strong projection uh, longevity eight plus hours like after eight plus when I say eight plus it's like countless like it's like just goes on and on and my rating for this is nine out of ten why not ten out of ten because it's such a strong perfume that I'll not have to ever buy it again it's gonna last me throughout my year, uh, life and uh, the celebrity I had given this to was Jason Momoa because like I don't know he has this masculinity about him and this one like does smell a bit like crudish you know not crudish like Shagaf Oud Abiyat, which was like um, raw, like like masculinity and everything. This one is not like that. It's a little bit more tamed, but also wild at the same time. It's like a weird thing. But when I smell this, I just feel Jason Momoa probably smells like this. So that's it for today, guys. These were my five top oud perfumes, or let's just call it like a version which is like the most Middle Eastern kind of perfumes, you know. And these were my top five very Middle Eastern learning uh, leaning perfumes. So guys, I've been recording all day. It's night now. I've started recording in the morning and I'm just going on and on and on because I should have been prepared for these 12 days, but I did not. And it's my, that's my fault completely. I was being lazy and I did not. But now I've realized my full potential. <laughs> that when you want to do something, you will do it. You know, when you have that deadline, you will do it. Is This is like when you have the, an examination, you wait till the last day, but then you manage to learn everything and you're like, shh, you know, <laughs> like I do have the capacity, right? So yeah, that's it for today, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow in the next one. And hopefully I'll let me like rotate them from fresh to like strong perfumes. So or uh, thicker perfumes, you know, and I'll try to keep it like fresh and nice for you guys. Maybe I'll do like a haul tomorrow. Yeah. All right. See you in the next one. Bye.